Hi there, I'm Roger Lee from Art Framer in Kelowna and I want to introduce you to Linda Norman. So what advice would you give to someone starting out? I guess in your medium as a painter. Yeah. As a watercolor yeah. artist? Uh, well, as I mentioned, buy the best you can afford right. in terms of um, Paint, and I suppose paper. that if, again, the affordability, you got to juggle, am I going to get 12 colors in the spectrum, or can I, you can start with maybe four or five. Even. You can probably even start with three. With and, a and simple palette, if, if yeah. with, the, with the right palette, and then mix from there, yeah. which is another whole, uh, you mixing, know. Mixing, right. The whole thing in itself is mixing the, the colors. Scientific study, is that uh, something right. to I learn. Right, I mean, you'll yeah. be able to tell the difference from of, of a painting painted by something straight out of the tube, compared to something that's been painted with something, you know, uh, through mixed colors. And, and yeah. my palette itself is, is, is yeah. filthy. Uh, yeah. It has all different kinds of, of bits of color. Yeah. And I call it palette dirt. And that's what I use often for shading and shadows and, and things where I want a bit of a darker color. And because it's made up of colors that I'm using, yeah. Yeah. you know, so basically a painting will consist of maybe three or four colors. Right, essentially. Uh, yeah. You don't want to use every color in the in the so crayon box. So maybe that's part of your advice: start out simple with a simple uh, array of colors, and start experimenting with the mixing, and learn right. how to get what you want. Uh, uh, get a, a spectrum of colors from right. that. I think first of all, you want to you want to determine what it is you want to paint. Yes. You know, do you want to paint abstract? Do you want to paint scenes? Do you right. want to paint portraiture? Dogs. Cats. Exactly. Yeah. So then you then you'll build your palette around that. Starting again, starting small. Yeah. Learn your color wheel. Learn that you know if you mix yellow and purple together, uh, you won't get a beautiful pansy. In effect, if you've done it in the wrong order, yeah. uh, you know of, of having the moisture on the paper, you'll get a brown, yeah. you know, dead thistle looking thing. So. Do you have to learn the the designated names of of colors because they're. Uh, there can be a variation there that makes a mixing different e with, with each one, right? Yeah. So each each um, each color has so many variations. Yeah. You know, there's um, and studying that a little bit is is maybe important. Yeah. Uh, is for the me, the true it, primary colors uh, essential, or is there, are there is there a type I, of blue I, and a type of red that are better? Yeah. Um, so there's warm and cool cool colors, yeah. and there's quinacridones, and there's thalos, and right. and a whole range of, of, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of colors and yeah. names so of colors. You just jump in and start uh, alchem alchemizing, alchemizing. Yeah. I would say, <laughs> you know, if, if if you're buying your paints, from alchemizing. An, that's it. That's the word. That's the word. <laughs> if you're buying your paints from an art store, yeah. So, for example, here in Kelowna, we have Opus Arts. Yeah. Their staff is really knowledgeable, right. and they will help you uh, if you went in and said. You know, I would. I want to start watercolor painting, and I want to buy four tubes of Winsor Newton, Daniel right. Smith, Holbein. They have a lot, a wide range of brands there. Even their own brand, Opus Brands, and they're lovely. Mm -hmm. They would work, um, and they will give you some information on what colors to buy, yeah. um, which would come together nicely. Then look Maybe. at your. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, then look at your paper. Yes. You know, and buy. You can buy a, a block. Yeah. or a pad of paper. A block is already s s uh, sort of sandwiched together yeah. and sealed on the edges, so your water is not going to make your, your pages curl up too much. Ah, yeah. So that's handy to have. Otherwise, you paint on the block and then and peel then, it off then you peel stuff. off your pages as you Somebody finish. Somebody's a genius putting that together. Absolutely. Um, otherwise you would um, tape it onto a, a, oh, yeah. Yeah. a hard surface. Um, some people, part of some people still yeah. wet their paper and stretch it onto boards. Oh. I, I just don't feel I have time for that right. uh, or, or much interest in doing that. I yeah. just want to paint. So right. um, I, the quickest way to the end is, is good for me. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then look at your brushes. Yeah. You know, natural hairs were always the go-to for watercolor especially because they're more supple and they absorb more water. Mm. Nowadays uh, it's not ethical. Yeah. to be, you know, harming animals to make brushes. Right. Uh, so there's lots of synthetics available right. that mimic squirrel or uh, other yeah. other um, brushes. Like I say, my, my Levens and brushes from Seattle, he sources his materials from garage sales and estate oh. sales. Oh, uh, he'll take old fur coats and, yeah. and taxidermy pieces oh. and create yeah. brushes and, and old furniture and make the handles, bamboo, oh. 
um, you know, room yeah. dividers make beautiful handles for yeah. paint brushes. Imagination's and the limit. When absolutely. When thinking of art. Yeah. So, but I guess my first advice is just start. Mm -hmm. Just start. Yep. Um, if you feel that you're wanting to pursue a relationship with the pigment in the water and, and what you can do together, yeah. then move from there. That's right. Move from there. Get, in, you know, get some nice paints on hand. Yeah. Get ready and then get going. And, and incorporate them and then work on some nice papers and yeah. surfaces and then, and then some brushes and... Like I say, sometimes you can create a beautiful painting with, I use a, bre a tab off a bread bag sometimes. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, to make the marks. Nobody has to know sometimes how we're getting our paint right. onto our, our paper, yeah. Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so um, I guess first advice, just start. Yeah. Just start. I like that, that your whole idea about beginning uh, to, to be creative has nothing to do with how it's to, re to be viewed or received or critiqued. I mean, yep. th that's way far down the road. Yeah, Just put some colors down, going. see what they do together. Yep. Let your juices flow yep. and realize things yeah. with your hands. Take some, you know, take a lesson or two if you can, or a workshop mm -hmm. or that two. That never hurts. Um, yeah. Go to art. Um, you can save time and all that experimenting just by you know learning from somebody who's got the experience. Right. The yeah. Just for some tips and, and tricks, and maybe join a group of other artists. Yep. Thank you for staying tuned. It's been really marvelous sharing Linda with you all. And if you'd like to know more about Art Framer, you can certainly check out artframer.net, and be sure to subscribe to this channel right here.